Ladies and gentlemen, I am Tosh Berman, and this is Tosh Talks. This specific episode is about me listening to music, but I cannot play the music due to, I think, copyright issues. Uh, I've done this before, and um, YouTube has taken the music away, showed my image. But I want to, uh, basically, I want you to focus what I'm talking about, and you can look at me as I'm talking. Um, I have become, over the years, like the last 20 years, I've been totally obsessed, obsessed with Ennio Morricone's music. Now, as most of you know, or I hope you know, Morricone um, is a great film composer. He, um, he's mostly famous, I think, for the general listener, for his spaghetti westerns he did in the early 60s, in the mid-60s. But Morricone is a much huge subject matter than the spaghetti westerns. To me, not only is he a great film composer, soundtrack composer, but I think the great composer of the 20th century and since he's still alive in his 80s, the 21st century. Um, what's interesting about Morricone was that he um, was a part of a avant-garde music group called Grupo di Improvisation Nuvo Conzanza. That's Italian, meaning improvisation group of the Nuva Conzanza. I presume Nuva means like new music of some sort. And what's unusual about Grupo, I'm going to just nickname the band Grupo or the group, if you translate it into English, group. What's uh, interesting about the group is that it's a band of composers who got together to do improvised music. And um, mostly, um, the main character who started this group is a gentleman by the name of uh, Franco Evangelisti, who is a composer. And I believe he did soundtrack work as well. I think all these composers did soundtrack uh, work in the Italian film market and beyond. And um, it's basically, it's, it's a group of, um, what makes them more different from, say, somebody like from John Cage or some other uh, composers or jazz, free jazz music at the time, which is um, sort of experimental form of jazz by, played by jazz musicians. But uh, this is actually a group consists of just composers and performers. But it's a composing aspect that's very interesting to me. And uh, Morricone and the others, um, I think, used their composition skills and thoughts and, and their aesthetic when they got together to make this improvised music. I mean, they had no plan what to do when they meet, but they have a certain ideal. And that ideal is this basically could, could be something conceptual. Maybe like there's like a 15 minute time limit they can do their music in or a five minute time limit. But other than that, it's really a group of guys who not only made music, made, who made music in a time frame and in a space, in a time and space, but also, um, it's also music where they have to listen to the other person. So it's very much about communication and the relationship between these five or six, seven, eight guys. Um, the band can consist anywhere from three to like 12. And it's a fluid uh, membership. I mean, they, they come and go. Morricone and um, Evan Gillespie are the two, I think the two main figures that stayed for the longest. And um, when you listen to this music, And if you're in tune to somebody like John Cage, you will think it's, it's John Cageian music. Um, it's, it's, first of all, it's music all done on real instruments. Uh, from my memory, a uh, trumpet that Morricone plays. Morricone plays a trumpet. There's sax, there's organ, uh, there's piano, especially for prepared piano, which is a John Cageian invention, I believe, which he altered the piano wires put objects between the, the wires, which caused the, um, the wires to vibrate against each other in a different manner. And then when you play the um, keyboard, it makes it more sort of a percussion instrument than, say, a, a, a melody, 
making melodies. And um, Grupo do not, are not interested in melodies, which is interesting enough because Morricone and the others wrote beautiful melodies in their other works. This is actually more about making sound and making that sound together with other guys, with other people. And at times it can be really noisy, and other times it can be very beautiful and very subtle. And there's a lot of subtle, beautiful moments in uh, Grupo's uh, music. And um, it's very interesting that um, um, how these guys in the 60s look at the world of making soundtrack music and doing what they're doing is, is, is Grupo. In fact, Morricone has used Grupo on numerous recordings when he did soundtrack work, uh, usually in the horror films or the sexy stuff, but mostly in the horror thriller films that he scored, he would use Grupo, which means it's not something he would write out, a score for them, but they would improvise sounds. That's what's being projected on the screen or, or is being shot. And um, Grupo... Uh, I think believe I think their existence, their the core existence, was or, um, early '60s to like maybe the early '70s, and I have um, at least some one, two, three, four. I have five albums by Grupo technically, but keep in mind that Grupo is also a part of other Morricone soundtrack albums, and um, I think this is their first album. I love this cover, by the way, and I strongly recommend you get it. It's a great album. It's it's what makes it different from the others is the way it's edited. There's a um, you can't really see this closely, but here it opens up. It has text in Italian, <laughs> Italian record, of course. And uh, what's interesting about this particular album? is the way um, Grupo uses the sound. They do like improvised music, and then there's like silence. And the silence goes on for a long period of time. We're not talking about like five minutes or three minutes, but like, you know, like 30 seconds. And it's almost like very edited and it's very cut. It sort of reminds me of maybe what Hogar Zuke did with Can when, uh, when Can would be jamming. And uh, Zuke, I, pres I presume, cut the tapes, re-edit it, stuff like that. And this may ha be happening with uh, Grupo as well, spe specifically this album. And then here's uh, other albums actually put out by Superior Vidic, Vidic. And this is called Musica Su Skim, Skem, Skemma, can I pronounce it? It's S-C-H-E-M-A. And a uh, fantastic album. This is actually the first Grupo album I purchased. And it got me really into the whole uh, complex. Love this band. And this is another uh, album, I think an earlier one. And um, I, I would recommend this as well. And they also had a group called The Group. It's in English, The Group. And it might be the best album for a, a beginner to get into because there's like a there's a consistent drum beat throughout the whole album. So it's like Grupo doing crazy music of all sorts, yet there's a drum beat. And it sort of reminds me of Can, speaking of thinking of Can. It has a sort of crop rock rhythm going. So that's called the group. The other thing I want to get, and when you really get into this, is this box set by um, Grupo. It's called Azioni Realizzoni, 1967-1969. And please keep in mind that I'm butchering the Italian language. Forgive me. But this is a five-record set. And it comes with a DVD, a documentary of Grupo's performance and uh, uh, of their past and their history. Fast, great DVD. And it comes with a booklet about 69 or 70 pages long. Half the book is in English, the rest is in Italian, but the text is fascinating. It's basically the composers themselves talking about why they put the Grupo together and their thoughts and their philosophy of doing what they do. And um, again, um, 
compared to say something like John Cage, which uses a lot of chance aspects, um, Grupo is more, I think, focus on what they know as composers. These guys are trained musicians. They're not, um, they're not amateurs. They're not punk rock guys or punk jazz guys, but these are guys who are trained in probably music schools in Italy. And um, it's that music knowledge that they bring to the table here. You're not going to hear uh, aspects of classical music. They're probably more closer to jazz than, say, classical music. But really, they even go beyond jazz. It's really organized noise done by real instruments with some electronic effects, usually by how the microphone is placed, the feedback from the mic, from the, from the actual instrument. And again, they prepared the piano. And um, Grupo di Improvisation Nova Canzanza are remarkable. I, rock, I re really strongly recommend that you pick up this music and these albums. And of course, anything by Morricone, who is a genius. And that is Tosh Talks. Oh, and please, please subscribe to my YouTube so, um, um, so I can get more people, become more popular. Because, as you know, I love you, but you need to love me more. Farewell. Bye-bye.